welcome you all to the lecture series on corporate law the present lecture is discussing or uh, i will be discussing on the debt capital the major instruments for the debt capital is on the debentures and the debentures are also called and also will be part and parcel of the debt capital of any of the corporations we will be discussing i will try to uh, throw a light on the aspects of debentures from the perspective of company law and also we will be analyzing the one of the landmark case sahara judgment 2011 delivered by the supreme court of india and still there is a lot of problem in the enforcement of on the judgment and recovery of the capital paid by the investors and when the investors are the uh, fictitious or there are lot of other lacunas let us move on to the Uh, provisions of corporate law then we will discuss about the cases so as for the section 2 class 30 of the companies act debenture includes stock bonds or any other instruments of a company evidencing a debt whether constituting a charge on the assets of the company or not so in a simple terminology according to the section 2 class 30 of companies act debenture is a document acknowledges the debt and this acknowledging of the capital through the debt instruments so that debt instrument means where the company borrows the money issues the capital let us have this small hypothetical example how this comes into the a limited wishes to raise the capital right and they identified that capital by issuing of debentures and the company sac provides if any company wishes to raise the capital through the debentures then it has to appoint debenture trustee right debenture trustee if number of investors are right if number of investors are more than 500 if the number of investors are less than 500 you don't require to appoint the debenture trustees the public limited company raising the capital through the debentures for the people more than 500 it has to appoint debenture trustee debenture trustee will take care of the responsibility on the issue that the managing of the funds now in other circumstances in the case called the other circumstances means how it applies to the in the case of private limited companies what would be the law and why this concept has become so so prominent in the case of the capital markets or in the area of the uh, what to call subject on the law particularly with regard to the debentures debentures basically borrowing of money by the company right company borrows the money by issuing of a document that is called debenture the returns for the investors are the returns for the investor is that they will get the interest if there is a person who tries to invest through debentures and they will get the interest in the case of normal debentures 
But if debentures are something convertible, non-convertible, redeemable and non-redeemable, we have the different types of the debentures. I will try to explain to you what are the various types of the debentures. In the first place, we have the debentures number one, convertible two, non-convertible three, redeemable four, non-redeemable so convertible means that there can be an option to the debenture holder the debentures can be converted into the share capital or they can be converted to the either equity or preference shares so the company can provide the option where you can find out that the uh, whether it is a convertible debentures or the non-convertible debentures redeemable non-redeemable provides the time factor at what particular point of time you can raise the capital and you can also take back your uh, what you call the uh, debentures back the redemption basically comes collection of the or uh, realizing of your right before the expiry of the uh, contractual terms before the expiry of the term which has been uh, written in the capital markets or the written in the documents as such now let us see these types of the documents like you know these types of the documents in the sense convertible and non-convertible and redeemable and non-redeemable how far law is recognizing them right how far law is recognizing them to talking to discuss about the types of various debentures as far as company law we will see the provision in company law that is section 71 of the companies act we have only one prominent section that is section 71 of the companies act for another 10 minutes we will discuss about the legal aspects of the section 71 of the companies act then move on to the sahara judgment what happened in sahara judgments we will see section 71 of the companies act speaks a company may issue the debentures with an option to convert the debentures into the shares this is what just i was telling convertible right debentures so a company may issue the debentures with an option to convert debentures into equity or the shares this is what we call it in corporate law is called as hybrid instrument right hybrid instruments means at the time of issuing of the document is is the debt instrument later it will be converted as a shares which we call as the equity so where we have an instrument with the two names a combination of debt plus equity and we can say this is as the hybrid instruments so kindly remember because this comes as the practice in the business uh, corporate law language the nature of the hybrid instrument in the sense a document which has a two natures because at the time of issuing of the document it falls under the category of the debentures then it can be converted at the later part of the time into the share capital so therefore we can say it is the hybrid instruments so under section 71 of the companies act a debentures can be issued and those debentures may also be convertible and also may not be convertible it is not necessary that all the documents can be convertible that is one either wholly or partively at the time of redemption right you can also call the redeemable and non-redeemable 
at the time of redemption they try to put it right no? at the time of redemption they will try to provide how much you can get back in your uh, accounts how much you can get back the meaning thereby is that how much amount you can take it back how much you can make a convertibility into the equity shares now the provision under 71 sub clause 1 provided that issue of debentures with an option to convert such debenture into the shares wholly or partly it has to be approved by special resolution in the general meeting it is a procedural class that means a company is supposed to take a prior approval in the company's management by passing of a resolution where you can uh, approve and after approval in the company's meeting the company may go for the issue of the debentures which are called as the convertible debentures one is about the procedural class other one is about the substantial part now see section 71 subclass number 2 no company shall issue any debentures carrying any voting rights so it is as simple as that debenture holders are not having the voting rights debenture holders will not have the voting rights they, they just have participatory rights to the extent of their uh, what you call about the debentures so that is what the simple as that subclass number 3 71 1 we have done subclass number 2 we have done subclass number 3 secure debentures may be issued by the company subject to the terms and conditions as may be prescribed this is also another very elaborative provisions secure debentures means when the company borrows the money by issuing of debentures the lender should be provided some security that where we call as the secure debentures in a simple understanding if the bank is giving loan to the company and company issues the debentures they keep some property as the securities the lender who lends the money by receiving the debentures then the lender requires some security in order to realize that money in the case of the default by the company it is as simple as that if you are giving money to somebody else you require them what is the security you are keeping in the case if they fail to repay then the lender who has lended the money can realize the uh, amount which has given by selling of the property or by different modes which are provided under the various legislations subclass number 3 71 subclass number 3 speaks where debentures are issued under this section the company shall create debenture redemption account DRR account out of the profits of the company available for payment of dividend the amount created to such account shall not be utilized except the redemption of debentures so section 71 subclass number 4 provides where the company issues redeemable debentures redeemable debentures means if the company takes the money by issuing of redeemable debentures it is understood that company has to repay to the debenture holders as and when redemption time comes as and when the debenture holders wishes to take back therefore company law provides under section 71 subclass number 4 that you keep a money or you keep some capital under the debenture redemption reserve account so therefore the money is kept in a special account and the money only can be utilized for the purpose of redemption of debentures so money cannot be used other than which is provided under the uh, redemption accounts 
so therefore we have the redemption of the shares redemption of the debentures when you see the section 71 class number one he found on one option that is convertible debentures and class number four you also found the language of redeemable debentures that is where i have put it here when you look about the types of the debentures convertible debentures non-convertible debentures redeemable debentures and non-redeemable debentures now subclass number five no company shall issue a prospectus or make an offer or invitation to the public or to its members exceeding 500 for the subscription of debentures unless company has before such issue or offer appoint one or more debenture trustees right appoint one or more debenture trustees to govern the fund raised by the debentures it is as simple as that if a company is raising debentures more than 500 people through prospectus or going to the capital markets it has to appoint the person that is debenture trustees right so debenture trustees is the requirement to appoint and by the company they are independent after appointment they will manage the issue they will try to discuss about the uh, rights duties uh, the process for investments and the where the investments are made these are being taken care by the debenture trustees so debenture trustees are the having the primary duties to take care about the complete issue subclass number six a debenture trustee shall take steps to protect the interest of the debenture holders and redress their grievances so debenture trustees will have the duty protect the interest of debenture holders and redress their grievances some of us may have a doubt what is the the what call the interest of the debenture holder what type of interest that they are having how these debenture holders can redress their grievances it is as simple as that the people who are investing in debenture holders they always require to get back their benefits by virtue of the shares by virtue of the interest or by virtue of the scheme which they have been provided if some in investors are there through debentures they are supposed to get back their money they are supposed to get back their capital with their returns as guaranteed in the debenture trustees it is also simple principle of business it is also simple principle of the any investment the investors required that investors are required to get back their returns which are assured on the time of or at the time of investments if they a one investor is investing even 100 rupees with a guarantee of 10 rupees return the total amount would be 110 always he should be protected his return the principal amount and the return of 10 rupees totally 110 rupees right so end of the day the investors always look for their returns in the investment where they invest in the on corporations particularly in the capital markets by looking the various schemes as given by the companies subclass number seven any provision contained in the trust deed for securing issue of debentures or in any contract with the debenture holders secured by trust deed shall be void in so far as it would have the effect of exempting trustee there of from or indemnifying him against 
any liability for breach of trust where he fails to show the degree of care and due diligence required of him as a trustee having regard to the provisions of trust deed conferring him any power authority or discretion provided that the liability of debenture trustees shall be subject to exemption as may be agreed upon by a majority of debenture holders holding not less than 3/4th of the value of total debentures at a meeting held for the purpose it comes about the liability of the debenture trustees as of now we don't require to talk elaborately on that maybe as and when time requires we can discuss because as for the indian trust act once you create a trust under the capital markets particularly for debentures there are liabilities there are non liability the liability in the sense if a person is acting without proper care and without diligence the opposite to the proper care and due diligence is that the people who acts as negligently the people who act negligently misusing the power as well as abuse of the power as vested and provided by the a uh, trust so therefore the debenture trustees have the duties that they should maintain the their duties they should perform their activities in the due care as well as the bona fide intentions because not to defraud the investors and 71 sub clause 8 a company shall pay interest and redeem the debentures in accordance with the terms and conditions of their issue and 71 clause number 9 where at any time the debenture trustees comes to a conclusion that the assets of the company are insufficient or are likely to become insufficient to discharge principal amount as and when it becomes due the debenture trustee may file a petition before the tribunal and the tribunal may after hearing the company and other persons interested in the matter by order impose such restrictions on incurring of any further liabilities by the company as the tribunal may consider the necessary in the interest of the debenture holders so this point is given a right to the debenture trustee to file a petition as and when trustee will come to know that the assets where the charge was created are insufficient so therefore trustee gives an alarm trustee try to inform to the tribunal see that the assets are very less so therefore there may be a uh, insufficient funds to the debenture holders end of the day debenture holders will have the problem in order to realize the money so therefore they can provide that the debenture holder can file the uh, legal redress debenture holders can move into the tribunal for their remedies sub clause number 7 uh, 10 where a company fails to redeem the debentures on the date of maturity fails to pay interest on debentures when it is due the tribunal may on application of any or all the debenture holders or the debenture trustees and hearing parties concerned direct by order the company to redeem the debentures forthwith on payment of the principal and interest due there on so it is a very simple clause on the failure to pay back right failure to pay back by the company and the tribunal can pass an order to repay so tribunal can pass an order to repay with the principal amount as well as with regard to the interest 
in the case of the default is made even at the tribunal has given order every officer of the company punishable with an imprisonment up to 3 years and up to 2 lakh rupees to 5 lakh rupees of the fine and any of these either both of them so in the case of the default in debentures the maximum punishment is given 3 years imprisonment as well as to the fine up to 2 to 5 lakh rupees any contract with the company to take up and pay for the debentures may be enforced by the decree a specific performance so specific performance has given for enforcement of the the rights now let us go back to the one of the landmark case we will discuss sometime on sahara judgment then we will also come back to the uh, the provisions of what we can say corporate law particularly in debentures before going to the judgments i will try to establish what happened in this case say for example a a limited company raised the capital going to public issuing of debentures namely ofcds from more than 20000 people I say 17,000 people, the amount is more than 20,000 crores, right? A company approached the public through private placement, right? A company approached the public through private placement, raised the capital up approximately 20,000 crores, the total number of people are more than 17,000 people. This transaction was happened under 1956 Act. Under 1956 Act, any company raises the capital through private placement, the maximum number of people shall not be, not be more than 50. So it shall not be more than 50. But whereas when you see here, the total number of people are more than 50, then automatically it comes as the uh, ambit of public offer. So if a company raises the capital, which is not permitted by law, then it is supposed to repay the money back because the company has to repay the collection of money, the collection of the capital to the investors with the 12% nominal interest. It's a very simple case as such. The company collected the capital through debentures, which is not permitted by the law. So therefore, Sahara Group has to be repaid with interest. But why this case has become so popular when the facts are very simple, law is also very simple. Because law also will say in the legal provisions and the court has given an order kindly repay the money with so and so interest. Even after giving the court order, the management of the company failed to repay the amount. Then the courts have to intervene. Adjudicatory bodies have to intervene to enforce the rights or to enforce the obligations of the company in order to repay to the debenture holders. Now let us see what happened in this case. I will introduce you to the original uh, judgment. Then we will see the what will happen in the original judgment. Then some of us can understand. If you get any point of time, uh, these judgments can be read. Some of the paragraphs are very, very important. I will try to read this judgment or we will discuss some of the paragraphs this particular judgment of 2011. Because in the law schools, uh, we try to dissect the judgments. 
because in the law schools what will happen or any law student uh, should not read any judgment from the newspaper clippings just only operating part of a judgment will not make you to understand and analyze the concepts it is always necessary to consult the original text understanding of the facts understanding of the analysis interpretation what are the gray areas of the subject legal vacuum in the subject and so on so then you will become a full fledged legal analyst a full fledged analysis of law will be very very important now let us see what happened in the some of the paragraphs of the judgment we are talking these appeals are primarily concerned under section 55b of the companies act right 55b of the companies act basically comes why is not there is some let me see. 55b of the uh, companies act cb basically talks with regard to the right there is some problem in the writing of okay, error clear no so section 55 of the uh, 55b of the companies act or uh, 55a of the companies act which talks on the uh, invitation of deposits invitation of deposits has been referred under the companies act 1956 act it was prohibited now moving further they also said transfer of securities to the public by listed companies or companies which are intend to get their securities listed on any recognized stock exchange in india the question whether optionally fully convertible debentures this is what i required your attention where they referred about the optionally fully convertible debentures right so they issued the their optionally fully convertible debentures so when you talking about optionally fully convertible debentures this was the document which was issued in this case by company let us see the name of the companies what happened here there are two companies names of the companies are sahara real estate corporation limited that is called sircl sahara investment corporation limited shi cl appellants we call it as sahara groups are controlled by as the companies of the companies controlled by sahara group saharas have raised almost all identical facts and questions of law before us we are all disposing with the common judgments so the names of the companies in paragraph 2 the sahara group of companies and one of the company sircl incorporated as sahara and in the 2005 as a public limited company under the companies act it has changed its name on 73 2008 this is what about the company we don't concerned about the balance sheet that is not necessary for all of us as on as on requirement of this subject this company that is sircl in egm decided through special resolution under section 81a 1a of the companies act to raise the funds through unsecured ofcds by way of private placement to friends associates group companies workers and other employees individuals affiliated or connected with any manner sahara group of companies so the company decided right the company decided here to raise the capital through the workers and the employees 
and other individuals without giving any advertisement to the public. So without giving any advertisement to the public, they want to raise the capital. So if you see here, the capital they says without giving any advertisement, they wishes to raise the capital. That is where the issue has come. So the company tries to raise the capital without giving any advertisement to general public. As we discussed in the commencement of the class, a company can raise the capital uh, going to the public and not more than or more than 50 people. And they are supposed to take approvals of the SEBI. Now, I just refer one of the section for you under the 1956 Act, section 73 of the Corporate uh, Companies Act talks. If any company raises the capital from more than 50 people, it becomes a public offer. You are supposed to take approval of stock exchanges in India, then it becomes a public issue. And the same correlated provision is the 2013 Act. Don't confuse. If any company raises the capital more than prescribed limit of the people, then it has to take a approval of the a regulatory body that is the SEBI as well as to the stock exchanges. Now let us move on what happened in this particular case. Right? We have identified the name of the companies. Company tried to raise the capital through private placement. Now let us see what happened in this case. They took an approval. Now we will see the nature of the scheme. It also talks about the information memorandum and the information memorandum was prepared and issued to the what is called about the uh, particular selected people and this is the format of the information memorandum. Generally the information memorandums are available either with the SEBI website or when you look for the uh, Supreme Court judgments. Let us read for your understanding. I am information memorandum is a document which is issued prior to the red herring prospectus. Because some of those we have already read are red herring prospectus also. So when you talk about the red herring prospectus, we have already seen the, uh, the information memorandum what happens because information memorandum just right. So information memorandum is also has the very important concept as such and the section 32 of the Companies Act talks about information memorandum prior to the uh, red herring prospectus. So this is what we have read into the uh, section 32 of the Companies Act. Then they said this issue is purely right purely private placement company doesn't intend to get this OFC listed any of the stock exchanges in India or abroad. This memorandum for private placement is a neither a prospectus nor a statement in lieu of prospectus. I will require your attention here. The information memorandum of private placement is neither a prospectus nor a statement in lieu of prospectus. It does not constitute an offer of invitation to subscribe to OFCDs issued by Sahara Real Estate Corporation Limited. The memorandum for private placement is intended to form the basis of evaluation for investors to whom it is addressed and who are eligible to subscribe to OFCDs. Investors are required, right? Investors are required to make their own, right? Independent evaluation and judgment before making the investments. Kindly remember the very, very important terms when the investors are being asked to read the documents. The companies have written very clearly the investors should make independent evaluation and the judgments before they make any of the investments. So company law makes very clear the companies have prepared a document in such a nature whereby company is not responsible for the judgments taken by the investors. It also gives another opinion. 
the company is not forcing anybody to make the investments right the people who are investing in this offer is well known that they invested by reading of the contents of moa so the contents of memorandum of private placement are intended by the investors to whom it is addressed and distributed it is for the private placement not for the other distributions right they prepared a document now once they prepare a document the other issue which comes to us is that what is there in the document now i want to put it in a simple understanding they issued the three types of the bonds yado about bond real estate bond nirman bonds i just want to put it the a common man perspective if i am investing 5000 rupees and the return is 7728 for 48 months that means if i invest 5000 rupees after 2 years my redemption value is 7722 that means my profit is 2020 2728 if i invest another bond for 5 years paying of 12000 rupees the return is like 3254 that means the total redemption is 15000 then i am going to get 3000 uh, rupees plus so if you see overall if i invest today 5000 rupees after 2 years my returns are 3000 rupees more than almost all 4000 rupees is a profit that is the nature of the bond the company floated so the details are given here and it is up to the people that who can opt these documents are also be transferable this i am not going in detail but to put it in a simple understanding the company raises a document ask for the investments paragraph number 7 the another crucial aspect of this particular case sircl floated issue of ofcds open ended scheme collected an amount of how much very difficult to read right so many numbers some of us might have already forgotten like hundreds 19400 crores 86 lakhs 64000 and 2 crores 200 crores that means almost all 20 crore thousand crores the capital was raised between the periods of 2008 to the 2011 and it has a total amount of scheme collected an amount of this much and collections of 17600 right 17656 crores 53 lakhs 22500 right 500 only after the p mature of dividends the above amount was collected from 22 crores people 22000 crores people right so the amount is almost all thousands of amount crores of amount not one investor if you see here almost all 22 crores 10 lakhs right and the, you have the huge amount of investors now the question will come the company law permits not more than 50 people or at the maximum 200 in the case of private limited this public limited company a collected money almost all 19000 crores and from the people ranging from the more than 200 it was the data which was available the simple punishment is that the company has to repay the money to the investors because this is the irregularity raising of the capital through unlawful means it is as simple as that when the facts are very simple law is also very clear why should we read this particular judgment 
Now let us see how this case came into public domain. Initially what happened, there was one investor who purchased a flat from Sahara Group. Company failed to pay the, uh, provide the flat. The person has filed a case in Allahabad High Court in 2008 on a flat dispute stating that I am having some suspicion, suspicion, suspicious activities carried on by the company. So let us make the investigations. By a complaint by one non-investor, he is an investor for the flats, the real estate dispute. He also made a complaint that the some of the activities which are carried out by the company are some of the suspicious activities. Then Sebi Suyomoto has taken the complaint and Sebi acted very very diligently that this was one of the, I can say, uh, the activism of the Sebi where the Sebi brought this uh, whole scam into the public domain and due to the limited resources also, Sebi is fighting this particular case. One side you have the corporate James, other side you have the government regulatory body or regulatory body which has been created by the statue is also struggling to fight with the big corporate James. So in this case, what was the judgment of the Supreme Court? Can we go back to the last paragraphs because 270 pages we don't read actually. Now what happens? Paragraph number 9. SEBI has already indicated has come to know large scale of collection of money from the public by Sahara through OFCDs while processing the RHP submitted by Sahara Prime City Limited and another company NM Securities Private Limited. Uh, these are all we don't require for our understanding because we are only concerned with regard to the uh, what is called about what happened in this particular case. Then let us see uh, what call the important provisions of uh, what company law. Because what happened in this judgment uh, from 2011, now we are in 2022. It's almost all uh, 11 years or uh, 12 years are completed. Even after 11 plus 12 years, why we should read this particular judgment? These judgments after the Supreme Court verdict and the uh, managing director of the company, Mr. Subrato Rai, has been sent to the jail, not because of the violations of this provision, because of the contempt of court. Contempt of court he used to take always a permission from the court not to attend. And therefore, what will happen is that he is not obeying the orders by the court stating that on various grounds which are available under the options before the law. Because in the legal process, you have the remedies available to the both the parties and every party will exercise their rights diligently to protect from the judicial process and also to evade from the judicial process. So the law provides the rights for the, both the parties and some of the parties may use properly, some of the parties may misuse the provisions. In this case, the management of the company try to avoid the court orders, try not to implement the court orders. So it becomes very, very difficult to the court how it has to make it. Now, when you see the paragraph number 115, what the Supreme Court said, there, there can therefore be no hesitation in accepting all three perspectives raised on the behest of SEBI to demonstrate that there was a pre-planned attempt 
at the hands of SRICEL, SHICEL to bypass regulatory and administrative authority of the SEBI does seem to be real. So I will repeat again. It is a pre-planned attempt at the hands of the SIRCEL, SHICEL, that is the companies to bypass the regulatory and administrative authority of the SEBI. One can only hope it is not so. But having so concluded, it is essential to express that there may be no real subscribers of the OFCDs. I will repeat again. In the Sahara's case, it is essential to express there may be no real subscribers for the OFCDs issued by SIRCL. Alternatively, there may be intermix of real and fictitious subscribers. This was emerged in the aforesaid situation, right? Lightly, remem kindly remember, in the Sahara's case, the investors are fictitious. The capital which was raised is the, what we can say, uh, not real. The company has a pre-planned motive and raises the capital from the very people. And the can only hope is untrue how the subscription amount collected should be dealt, especially when the impugned orders passed by SEBI sat are to be affirmed. Even though I hope that all the subscribers are genuine and so, and also the subscriber amount it will be necessary to modify the operative part of the order of this issued by SEBI, which came to endorse by the SAT. The purpose of law is not only to be not only satisfied, but is also enforced. So the Supreme Court said the purpose of law is not only an enforcement and also to be enforced. Because this judgment as comes is very importantly, where you find the total amount which was collected almost all 17,400 crores initial estimate and the amount has to be paid within 15% interest. Now the company has to pay with an interest that's what the order has given. Now after the order what happened. So this is one of the landmark case in the Indian capital markets where the companies collected the money by raising of the capitals right by raising of the capital through the various mechanisms which are provided in the uh, uh, what's called the capital markets. Let us see what happened in this case after the this particular judgment happened. Now, let me erase this one just a minute. Because what happens in this case, let us see if there is some problem. Right. So in this case, what happened after Supreme Court judgment? Now, Sahara has to make a sale of the property and company failed to make the sale of property. The managing director, some of the employees already completed their imprisonment or the judicial custody for a period of more than three years, right? More than three years under contempt of court. Contempt of court. Now the management of Sahara says we will return the money by selling of the properties. Now in order to sell the property which is almost all more than 20,000 crores of money. Where is the buyer? 
to purchase the property and in this case particularly and in the initial days sometimes there was a process to sell the property under the judicial process under the guidance of the supreme court of india that was not successful then sebi also has taken the undertaking that we will sell the property and return the money sebi also failed in the recent times the authorities of the sebi filed a petition before the supreme court stating that we are unable to sell the property so therefore uh, you instruct the company to sell the property now as on date the dispute is that the sahara group has to sell the property once you sell the property pay the money to the right you pay money to the debenture holders otherwise called ofcds it has already been identified these are fictitious these are what called as the non existing members in that case the money will go to the central government then money will go to the investor education fund so automatically the money will go to the investor education fund to think about all this process it's been almost all 15 years now and we don't know when the justice can be delivered and to whom it will be delivered so as a student of law the sahara case one of the a landmark example how the corporations are using the deceptive devices are using deceptive devices to defraud the investors to defraud the capital markets and raising of the capitals so it comes in the light in awareness or also a, a example for the investor think twice before you make an investments think twice before you make an investments that's what the comes as an awareness but that is about the sahara's case and this just i try to uh inform you by looking into the paragraphs and the phrases from the judgment of supreme court of india so i think this lecture i try to introduce you to the meaning of the debentures and also the uh, debenture trustees and the debt capital etc there is also a further by product of the subject is called charge holders and the creation of the charge for debentures and other product uh, debenture of the trustees and the charges maybe that i will be taking another lecture on the pari passu charges so debenture is one of the very very important concept in the capital markets particularly where the corporations raises the capital by issuing of the debt instruments i will pause my lecture here we will again meet another lecture on the new concepts which is related to the again the debentures as well as the charges so kindly listen the lectures if anyone is unable to follow kindly make the comments i will try to explain because i am taking the lectures keeping in the mind of legal background at least to understand the students of law on interpretation and analysis of law so it will help you in day to day management as well as preparation of your briefs in the court of law so thank you and see you again take care bye